Hello and welcome to the lesson Hydrogen Production Methods. In this first unit, we will cover the different existing methods to produce hydrogen from fossil fuel sources. We will start with an introduction about how we can uh, classify these different methods, followed by a description of how hydrogen can be produced from natural gas. Hydrogen can be generated from a variety of primary energy sources. In general, any substance in which hydrogen appears in the composition may serve as a possible source for obtaining hydrogen. For example, it can be produced from water or hydrocarbons as well as organic matter of plants or animal origin. Depending on the type of energy source used, we can classify these methods in two categories, production from fossil fuel and production using renewable sources. Nowadays, 96% of all hydrogen produced comes from the thermodynamical transformation of fossil fuels, almost half of natural gas, with only 4% being obtained by pyrolysis. The reason why most hydrogen is produced from natural gas is that it is the most economical option. However, this results in high energy and environmental costs, which is not sustainable in the long term. Fortunately, the same processes used to produce hydrogen from natural gas, oil and coal, and coal can be applied to fuels obtained from biomass, opening up huge prospects for the production of clean hydrogen. In the same way, by using electricity from renewable sources to electrolyze water, clean hydrogen can be produced with no carbon emission, even though nowadays it is a more expensive option. In any case, obtaining hydrogen means, means extracting hydrogen from other molecules for which a significant amount of energy is needed. Extraction is more affordable from compounds that are in high energy states such as fossil fuels. In this case, the process itself produces some of the energy needed, unlike what happens with compounds that are in lower states, such as water, whose dissociation demands large amount of energy. This can be appreciated in the graph, where hydrogen production by electrolysis is notable for its high energy consumption compared to the other fossil fuels production methods. Additionally, production hydrogen costs 3 to 15 times more than producing natural gas and depending on the process, 1.5 to 9 times more than producing gasoline. Therefore, redu redu reducing hydrogen production costs is a key aspect of its implementation. We will explain now how hydrogen is produced from natural gas. Natural gas is formed from terrestri terrestrial and marine plants as well as from animals that have been deposited and buried deep enough to reach the necessary pressure and temperatures. It is a mixture of gaseous hydrocarbon, methane mainly, and usually contains a large amount of non-hydrocarbon gases that must be removed, for example nitrogen and carbon dioxide. It also contains acid gases including hydrogen sulfur sulfide, carbon dioxide, carbonyl sulfide, and mercap mercaptans. There are several processes for obtaining hydrogen from natural gas. The first one presented here is meth steam methane reforming, uh, which consists of bringing hydrocarbon and steam into contact at high temperatures in the presence of a catalyst. During the process, natural gas is mixed with steam to react at high temperatures, normally between 500 and 900 degrees Celsius, in the presence of a nickel catalyst. The methane reforming reaction is clearly endothermic, as it requires 206 kilojoules per mole of methane for the reaction to occur. The reaction takes the form so in this equation, where the products obtained are hydrogen, CO, CO2, coke, induced uh, residual steam, and unreformed methane. The optimal conditions for a steam methane reforming process are values of temperature between 700 and 800 degrees Celsius and a steam, a steam methane ratio between 2 and 3. Under stoichiometric 
conditions, the conversion rate is maximum for high temperature and relatively low pressure. Excess of steam is often inje injected to increase hydrogen production and reduce the amount of CO produced. Moreover, if the reforming reaction uh, is carried out in the presence of CO2 absorbers, the temperature of the reaction can be reduced considerably, achieving the same conversion of methane into hydrogen and a higher purity of the hydrogen produced. Alternative processes are currently being studied such as reforming with membranes with which the energy consumed can be reduced by 10%. Another process to produce hydrogen from natural gas is the CO2 reforming. Similar to the previous process, if now the steam is partially or completely replaced by carbon dioxide, the result is another hydrogen CO ratio shift to a more CO rich synthesis gas. The catalytic reforming of methane with CO2 includes an environmental benefit since two greenhouse gases are combined. The optimal conditions of this process are obtained at temperature above 700 degrees Celsius. However, currently no industrial technology has been established because the catalysts used are consumed very fast. Partial oxidation is another method where the, hydrogen rea the hydrocarbon reacts with an amount of oxygen below the ste stoichiometric condition, so that the carbon is partially oxidized. Thanks to this process, methane can be converted into synthesis gas with or without catalyst. The oxygen use must be pure and in order to prevent reverse reaction, it is necessary to supply water immediately. The reaction shown here is an exothermic process, which means that some energy is released. Therefore, the process can be done without external burners that maintain this high temperature, which is an advantage. The reaction products contain mainly hydrogen and carbon monoxide and a relative, relatively small amount of carbon dioxide and other components. When a catalyst is used, the process takes place at about 600 degrees Celsius, whereas the catalyst-free process occurs at temperature between 1100 and 1500 degrees Celsius. And uh, about the pressure, they take place in a range of 2C, 2 and 6 megapascal. To conclude, we should mention an interesting concept here, that it is the autothermal reforming. Here, if a steam is added to the fuel and the oxidant, it is possible that the heat balance of the exothermic reaction may be balanced with that of the endothermic reforming reaction. Therefore, no external heat source is required to increase efficiency, which represents a great advantage. An alternative thermocatalytic decomposition is the thermal cracking, where methane decompose at temperatures between 700 and 800 degrees, degrees Celsius um, to form hydro, hydrogen and carbon. It is an endothermic reaction where the thermal energy required per mole of hydrogen produced is 37.8 kilojoule kilo per mole of hydrogen, almost a half compared to the energy required in the steam methane reforming process, which is 63 kilojoules per mole of hydrogen. This process does not produce CO2 and as a result there is no additional cost of capturing and de depositing that we have with steam reforming. In fact, the CO2 emissions produced throughout the process are less than 0.05 mole of CO2 per mole of hydrogen while with the steam reforming are around 0.43 mole of CO2 per mole of hydrogen. However, despite this advantage, the process has the disadvantage of producing solid carbon. In order to reduce the methane dissociation temperature, catalysts are normally used. This, they can be based on metals or carbon. The use of carbon-based catalysts offers certain advantages over the metal ones, 
which are their availability, durability and low cost. When catalysts are not used, the decomposition of methane produces amorphous carbon, commonly called black carbon. The economy, economic feasibility of this process depends to a large extent on the selling price of the coal byproduct produced, which in turn depends on the catalyst use and the operating condition in the reactor. The last process we will talk about it is the metallic ox oxide reduction, where gallium oxide is reduced to metal using methane at temperatures between 900 and 1000 degrees Celsius. The problem with this reaction is that the activity of the metal decreases and the oxidation reduction cycles are repeated. To summarize, we can affirm that the steam methane reforming process it is the most widespread technology at large scale because of its favorable economics and the larger number of units in operation today. Autothermal reforming is also in use and car carbon capture, utilization and storage can be applied to both methods which can lead to a reduction in carbon emission up to 90% if applied to both process and energy emission streams. The figure shows the hydrogen production cost using natural gas in different regions. We can see that this cost is influenced by various technical and economic factors with gas prices and capital expenditure or capex being the, the, mo, the two most important. Actually, fuel, fuel costs are the largest cost component in all regions and account for between 40 and 75 percent of production cost. As it can also be appreciated, adding, adding carbon capture, utilization and storage, storage to steam methane reforming plants lead to cost increases of around 50% for capex and around 10% for fuel. It also leads on average to a double OPEX cost as a result of CO2 transport and storage cost. In the next video we will finish the second part of this unit explaining the rest of production methods from fossil fuels. Thank you for your attention.